Tonight, GoPro might be making their own drones. Uber could grow bigger than Kraft Foods. And Twitter wants to track your apps. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 224 for Wednesday, November 26th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by iFixit. You can fix it, and iFixit makes it easy with free step by step repair guides, high quality replacement parts, and all the tools you'll need. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to iFixit.com slash twit and enter the code TN2 at checkout. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Known for their line of small video cameras used on many drones, GoPro now has plans to start making drones of their own. This is according to people familiar with the matter. Starting late next year, the company plans to start selling multi-rotor helicopters with onboard high-def cameras priced between $500 and $1,000. Now, recently, the world's biggest consumer drone maker, which is SD. DGI Technology Corporation of China, makers of the Phantom quadcopters, you might be familiar with those, started selling devices that come with built-in cameras. So if GoPro does make copters, other drone makers could stop supporting GoPro devices if they feel they're competing directly with the camera maker. GoPro, which is 10 years old now, went public in June and has been invested heavily in research and development to maintain its lead in the camera business. They shipped Almost 2.8 million units of the first nine months of the year, up 15% from the same period last year. What can I say? Everybody likes a drone. Uber investors are betting that the car booking service is more valuable than Twitter and also maybe as large as Delta Airlines and maybe even Kraft Foods. The startup is in the midst of another fundraising push and is close to raising a round of financing that could value the company between $35 billion and $40 billion. This is according to people familiar with the situation speaking to Bloomberg. Anand Sanwal, who is chief executive officer of CB Insights, which is a research firm in New York, says, quote, at this valuation, investors appear to be thinking that when Uber goes public, it might be worth $80 billion to $100 billion. As we all know, Uber has also had some PR issues recently. Well, God view, journalist hounding. We've talked about this quite a bit on TN2. Now, somewhat curiously, competitor Lyft, who has had a bit of a, you know, a punching match with Uber over the last few months, has been pretty much silent until today. The company isn't sharing specifics, but says that it saw its biggest week in terms of number of rides based on the Uber backlash that was last week, a spokesperson tells VentureBeat. This beat out the previous record for Lyft during the week of Halloween. So is it a sign that people might be abandoning Uber? Maybe temporarily, maybe for real? Well, if you look at app download numbers, it suggests that Uber's still doing just fine. All right, let's talk about Twitter. And to do that, I would like to introduce Harrison Weber, news editor over at VentureBeat. Hello, Harrison. Hi, how's it going? Very well. Thanks for joining us the day before Thanksgiving. All right, so let's talk about Twitter. Twitter's going to start tracking apps on your smartphone because they want to deliver more targeted ads to you. So tell us what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So they're calling it their app graph. Basically, they're going to take a, or they want to take note of the apps you've already downloaded on your phone and update that list periodically. Now, they say they're not going to take any data from these apps. So it's just the names of the apps that you've downloaded. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, not an opt-in thing. They're going to do this automatically with a warning uh, and they want to start rolling this out soon. Okay, so if they're not taking any data from apps, what exactly do they gain from knowing what apps that we have on our phones and, and what do they want to do with at least just the, the app names? Yeah, so they say it's for a few reasons. Ultimately, they're saying that the pitch is it's a more personalized Twitter experience. So that obviously means targeted ads, which they made pretty clear, uh, improved who to follow suggestions and other personalized things. Um, what they can do with this, I mean, we can we can go on and, and speculate that, let's say, um, Lyft, like you were just talking about, uh, wants to advertise to people who are 
you know, users of Uber, they can easily do something like that. So Twitter hasn't come out with any uh, specific examples, but that's definitely a possibility. Okay, so what exactly is App Graph? You know, is, if, if I'm going to Twitter.com, and what am I going to see that's different? Am I going to even notice this if I'm using some sort of a third-party third Twitter app, for example? Yeah, so it's just their name. It sounds it's almost a little bit deceptive when compared to to the social graph, but it's just the name that they have uh, for this this gathering of of uh, app names. And so that's it. It's not a, it's not a product for for users. It's a product, uh, you know, presumably for advertisers, and um, and it's pretty limited right now. For so what, yeah, does it? Go on. Do it sounds to me, at least on the surface, that this sounds like Twitter is moving more and more towards filtering our timelines, much like Facebook does. If, if you know, one of the reasons that I actually don't go to Twitter.com and look at uh, people's profiles is because it started to weight tweets based on you know how many favorites or retweets or that sort of thing, which you know, personally just doesn't work for me for Twitter. But it, I mean, is this sort of an inevitable uh, shift to more of a Facebook experience? Beyond uh, advertising, that is what it seems like Twitter's heading towards. It seems like they're looking for new ways to cater to um, you know the people who don't just want this massive feed of everything that's happened uh, and having to you know like scroll through and see everything. So yeah, they're they're starting to personalize, um, or they're working to personalize. They've already said this: uh, the the tweets that you see when you come back to the app, so you don't have to scroll through each one. We already know that that uh, if someone favorites a tweet. They might, it might show up as a suggested tweet in your timeline, even if you don't follow that person. So this appears to fall in line with, with that sort of personalization. Do we know any uh, details about uh, what Twitter and advertisers might be, uh, the sort of partnerships that might be going on behind the scenes here uh, as far as revenue share? I mean, this sounds like it's all about advertising. Yeah, I mean, they made it pretty clear that th this is about advertising in their, uh, in their statement on this. They refused... Uh, or rather decline to comment any further on it with us. Uh, but we'll probably see more of this in, a, you know, in the coming year. Harrison Weber writes for VentureBeat. Thanks so much for joining us, Harrison, day before Thanksgiving. And before we let you go, remind folks where they can keep up with your work. Of course, you can find me on VentureBeat.com and on Twitter at Harrison Weber. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great holiday. Thank you for having me. Coming up, what's better than fuel? Diesel? Uh, no, what's better than diesel? There is something. And after the break, Facebook might be the biggest social network in the world, but it's not the fastest growing, and we'll tell you who is. But first, this holiday season, gift the gift of DIY repair with iFixit's ProTech Toolkit. The ProTech Toolkit has 70 tools to help you with any mod or malfunction or misfortune that might come your way. And it always does, right? iFixit has a 54-bit driver kit that has standard specialty and security bits. Also includes precision tweezers, an anti-static wrist strap, opening tools to get inside any phone or notebook or tablet or game console that might be giving you trouble. You just kind of want to open up. It's compact. It's lightweight. It's very durable. It's the gold standard for electronics work from home DIYers. Everybody knows a DIYer. Might be you. Might be someone you know. The FBI even uses it too. But most importantly, the ProTech Toolkit is used by computer and smartphone repair technicians everywhere. So if you have somebody come over to your house and, you know, fix something, they're going to use the same tools that you could get with iFixit. iFixit has something for every hacker geek on your holiday list. Head over to iFixit.com slash twit for the ProTech Toolkit and other holiday deals. And enter the code TN2 at checkout, and you'll save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. That's ifixit.com slash twit, and get that $10 off. It's the holidays, everybody, and everybody knows somebody who wants that toolkit. All right, on to a few more stories that we're following today. Okay, so we were talking about Facebook before the break. How are those 1.35 billion active monthly users going on Facebook? You would think pretty well, right? Well, research by the Global Web Index today notes that Tumblr's active user base in the last six months grew by 120%. Okay, let's compare that to Facebook, 2%. 
In overall member growth, Pinterest is actually in first place with 57% growth, while Facebook's member base grew by just 6%. Now, Facebook still has the largest mobile app today, but Snapchat is the fastest growing of them all, at least on mobile, up 56% this year. Although Facebook Messenger and Instagram aren't far behind. Mozilla just announced some new features coming to Firefox, hot off the heels of the company striking a deal with Yahoo to replace Google as the default start, uh, search engine rather in its browser for U.S. users. So here's what's new. In the future release, when you type a search term into the Firefox search box, you'll get a list of reorganized search suggestions from the default search provider. It's all based on how often you've done a web search already knowing that you would click the first result that looked like a Wikipedia page. Firefox knows what you're doing. With the company's new one-click searches, though, you can more easily find what you're looking for across the web. By the way, Firefox is still the only major browser that still offers a search bar separate from the address bar. And I know that makes my mother happy. Amazon did not sell a lot of Fire Phones this fall. Just didn't even after a price cut. But the company isn't giving up. Amazon is offering the Fire Phone for just $199 unlocked, which is a $250 price cut off the phone's already reduced price. Okay, so let's put this into context. A year of free Amazon Prime is still included. So in that sense, if you want Prime anyway, the phone is just $99 extra and contract free. The Fire Phone was initially priced at $199 with a two-year contract or $649 with a contract, without a contract rather. Back in September, Amazon cut the price to 99 cents with a two-year contract or $449 unlocked. So hopefully they'll sell a lot of fire phones this holiday season. Okay, finally, I've been very excited for the story of the entire show. There's a new bus in uh, Bristol, England called the BioBus, which is nicknamed the number two bus because... It runs on fuel made from human waste. Yes, the biogas in the bus's tank is also made from food waste. Now, before you just say you and, you know, hold your nose or whatever, it turns out that powering a bus with poop can actually help a city smell better. The waste treatment plant that produces the fuel is virtually odor-free, at least from people who are near the facility. And the bus exhaust is also a lot cleaner. For example, a bus running on diesel churns out about 40 toxic air contaminants from benzene and arsenic and formaldehyde to, you know, nitrogen oxides that all causes smog. The bio bus, by comparison, reduces those pollutants by 97%. And there's just no shortage of it ever. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. I have stuffing on the brain. I don't know. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every day at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Of course, don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, that starts back up next Monday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. And have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And for those of you outside the U.S., <laughs> I tried to think of something good and I was like, I don't have anything. I just don't have anything. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.